Is it any wonder that so many people are so depressed, dissatisfied, unhappy, unfulfilled, and frustrated? As Bashar said, they've been working so hard to try to be something they aren't. It's only the ego that would like us to believe that we're more than what we actually are, and in this case believe that we are the consciousness creating our experiences. The way this ego worked for so long was such a perfect mechanism, but now it's time for a new game. We'll also talk a lot more about our relationship with this consciousness in the next workshop. Once again, this model says we are not the consciousness on the other side of the field, we are not our higher self, we are not in training to be our higher self, the higher self is not who we really are, and we are not ever going to be our higher self, no matter how much fasting, prayer, meditation, organic food, or spiritual evolving we do. We simply can't be. We're on the wrong side of the field to be choosing specific wave frequencies to download as holograms. And we literally have no power on this side of the field to create, change, fix, or improve any experiences we have. So I think it's time we come up with a new name for this consciousness on the other side of the field so we can stop all this confusion using the same word for very different things. Does it really matter what we call it? Can you call it something different than I do, for example? Well, yes, I suppose, although it's always helpful to have the same name for something we want to talk about together. If I call this a chair and you called it a table, conversation would not be that easy. And there's another factor involved here. Those of us who have been living and testing this model for some years now have discovered through experience that words, language, take on a new importance. The man who got me started in this model, Robert Scheinfeld, calls it transformative vocabulary. Basically, we found out that a lot of our language is based on the judgments, beliefs, and opinions we have developed, along with the fears that run our lives, that simply don't express what we want to say anymore in this new model. For example, Bashar called this consciousness on the other side of the field the higher self. That name, frankly, can be interpreted to be very judgmental. The word higher implies that this consciousness is somehow better than, or more elevated, or more spiritual, or more advanced than we are on this side of the field. There's no doubt we're different, but we're no worse or no lower than this consciousness. And I'm sure this consciousness would not want us to think we were either, just as a good parent would not want their child to think the child was somehow an inferior version of them. For the same reason, terms like higher consciousness or higher power or expanded self don't work either. Then there are the New Age terms like universal mind, cosmic consciousness, God ray, divine self, and the list goes on seemingly forever. But these terms all imply that this is a position of enlightenment, an avatar, an advanced soul, and so on, a position you haven't reached, but you should, making you less than in your current condition. By the time we are finished this workshop series, I hope you fully understand that you are not less than anything and can stop judging yourself thinking you need to be something else you are not. So I'd like to find a name that isn't judgmental or disparaging to us as human beings. But I don't want to use soul or spirit or anything else with any religious connotation. 
This isn't about theology or ascended masters or higher levels of spirituality. And there doesn't seem to be much more agreement about what soul or spirit means than what consciousness means. René Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. However, in quantum physics, we are finding that the opposite of everything is also true. I am, therefore I think. The consciousness we're now talking about is the I am. You and I and our self-consciousness are the I think. When we're talking about the you and me in our total immersion movie on this side of the field, we could actually call ourselves the finite I, bound by the limitations and restrictions of the holographic universe. When we're talking about the consciousness on the other side of the field, I can imagine that it has more of an infinite nature, not bound by the limitations and restrictions of the holographic universe maybe including infinite power, infinite joy, infinite wisdom, infinite abundance, unlimited and unconditional love, and an unlimited desire to play and express itself creatively, which is Robert Scheinfeld's model. So I'm going to suggest that instead of calling it consciousness, we call it the infinite eye. At least, that's a name that has worked very well for me as I test and apply this model in my life. So from now on, through the next two workshops, I will be calling this consciousness the infinite I. Therefore, in conclusion, this model says it is your infinite I on the other side of the field that chooses each and every experience you have by selecting specific wave frequencies from unlimited possibilities in the field and downloading those experiences to your brain exactly the way it wants, down to the smallest detail. So what about that old New Age saying, you create your own reality? According to this model, this slogan is not very accurate. What seems to be more accurate is that your infinite eye creates your unique holographic experiences, which you perceive, to which you are totally free to react and respond in any way you choose. You could say, your infinite eye creates your unique holographic experiences. Not quite as catchy a slogan, but much more accurate. So there it is. This is the fundamental shift that needs to take place in our understanding of how this holographic universe works. That you and I on this side of the field do not create our holographic experiences. That we are not our infinite I. And our job is simply to perceive those experiences created for us by our infinite I and react and respond to those experiences in any way we choose. This is the equivalent of learning that the earth is round and not flat. This is where we have been headed in these workshops. Why is this so important? Because it seems that true joy in life and peace of mind is being able to embrace every moment of every experience equally without judging one experience to be better or worse than any other experience. When you truly realize and understand that your infinite eye is creating each and every experience for you down to the smallest detail, and therefore stop judging and resisting those experiences, it becomes relatively easy, or should I say relatively easier, to do that. In turn, it means you can truly live in the moment, knowing the experience you are having is perfect exactly the way it is, with your focus on appreciating what you have rather than what you don't have or wish you had. But this brings up so many questions, like, 
Why would my infinite eye create an experience for me that I don't like? Why doesn't my infinite eye give me what I want, like more money, a good relationship, and happiness and joy and peace of mind? Why would my infinite eye cause me to suffer so much? Am I really just a pawn of my infinite eye, like a puppet on strings? These are all very legitimate questions which we will talk about in Part 4 of this workshop, along with the more basic questions of why would my infinite eye create me as a hologram in the first place? What's my purpose in the holographic universe? What's the actual relationship between me on this side of the field and my infinite eye on the other side of the field? What game is my infinite eye playing with me? We're going to take a look at the answers to those questions in Part 4. Your homework, what I want you to do in preparation to watch Part 4 of this workshop series, is first, watch the movie called The Game with Michael Douglas and Sean Penn, and then practice seeing every one of your experiences as coming from your infinite eye, who wrote the script for the holographic 3D total immersion movie you are projecting. Once you have done your homework, please visit www.holographicuniverseworkshops.com for more information about continuing with Part 4 of this workshop series. In the meantime, you can download my free ebook, Butterflies Are Free to Fly, a new and radical approach to spiritual evolution by visiting www.butterfliesfree.com.